Well, the Yes campaign is building up ahead of the voice to parliament referendum due by the end of this year. The advertising doesn't prove to be working just yet as support for the Indigenous voice softens according to the polls and the majority of Australians say they still don't understand what it entails. Joining me to discuss this is former Labor Minister, Labor veteran, Graham Richardson. Graham, thanks so much for your time. Now, you're a Labor Party loyalist, you're a friend of the Prime Minister's, but you're not going to support the voice to Parliament. Why? Well, I, uh, I can't see the need for it. I can't see what it will accomplish. As far as I'm concerned, uh, there's no need for anyone to have this so-called voice to the Parliament. We, our voice is our vote and we get to vote for that Parliament every three years. As far as I'm concerned, uh, that's the voice. And what about the main argument that Indigenous Australians deserve to be recognised in the Constitution, uh, that all of the moves, all of the billions of dollars that the Australian government over you know, many years has put in trying to address Indigenous disadvantage hasn't worked? You don't think this, this would go away to helping that? No. Um, I think that's a, an intractable problem. No one's ever solved it. Um, I had my... Uh, time as a minister. Uh, I was responsible for spending an awful lot of money uh, in the Northern Territory in particular for very little or no result. Uh, I'm uh, just one of a, a number of ministers over time who've tried, but we've all failed uh, because thus far uh, the problem of Aboriginal disadvantage has proved to be intractable. And so the idea that uh, your friend Anthony Albanese has put forward is that if there was a working group, if there was a voice to parliament uh, with Indigenous people that came from all the different regional areas and they were then giving advice to the executive and to politicians on actual policy before it became policy, that this could in some way help the problem, problem of disadvantage. It you know, it isn't, isn't it worth giving it a go? Well, no, in my view, uh, because I, I'm absolutely sure it won't help Aboriginal disadvantage. Why? Uh, we've, Why? We've, look, we've, over all these years, how much money have we thrown at this? How much time have we spent? What have we invested in this? And yet, when you look at it, we've achieved very little. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's a terrible, terrible problem. Um, but the idea that, that the, the voice will fix what money hasn't is something that I can't, uh, I can't quite grasp. So the idea that input from an Indigenous people to policy making, you know, and, and decisions, you don't think that would help, could help, is worth a try? Well, I, 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 there's a fair bit of input now. I mean, in, well, you give a few more people input, uh, it won't change anything. Um, it's not as if Aboriginal policy is made in a vacuum. It doesn't matter who's in government. I mean, I'm not uh, going to buck at the Liberals over this. Um, I think we're all in the, in the same position here. You, you get into government and you try very hard to deal with what's proved to be a problem that no one can deal with. And, and you just do your best. Every day you come to work and you have a crack at it. But it's, it's just one of those problems that won't go away. And what about the part of Indigenous recognition in the Constitution? Is that something you agree with? Well, uh, it's not something I'm particularly keen on, but it's also not something I'd be prepared to get into a brawl over. As far as I'm concerned, if that is a, a, a well-held majority view, I'm not going to try and change things. Do you think Anthony Albanese should have just stuck with that as the basis for the referendum recognition in the Constitution because it is perhaps something that a majority of Australians might support, whereas the model he's chosen, giving you know, a voice body, giving advice to the executive uh, is, is just too ambitious and, and people don't understand it. Even voice supporters struggle to get behind it. They're worried about legal challenges, among other issues. Well, I... I uh... I just don't think this was a very wise course of action. Uh, and I think um, Albo will live to regret it. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to deal with Aboriginal affairs, as we all know. Um, and everyone's got a panacea, except everyone's panacea fails. So will this. Fascinating you say that Albo will live to regret it. So you think it's going to fail at a referendum later this year? 
I believe so, yeah. Um, I mean, you've got to see the campaigns yet, and maybe uh, Albo will come up with something really brilliant. Uh, he's a brilliant guy, so that wouldn't surprise. Um, let's see what happens. But I, I would think if, uh, if you're putting money on at the moment, I'd have my uh, couple of dollars on no. And how do you think that would affect his prime ministership if the referendum is unsuccessful? Oh, I don't think it'll have much effect at all. Um, it's the only time that, are, that it would really affect people is if they felt this uh, this particular referendum was going to really hit their hip pocket, and they don't believe that. So I, I can't see that it it'll matter that much to him. He wants this though as part of his legacy. You know that that's very clear. When he held that press conference alongside the working group, uh, he pointed out he, he very clearly made the point that he doesn't just want to be a prime minister who does nothing. He wants to achieve something important, and then he cited this as being you know that project. So it. You know, it, it could be so disheartening for him, similar to when Kevin Rudd, you know, um, didn't achieve in, in Copenhagen and the wind just got taken out of his sails and it was all downhill from there. Well, um, I, I never believed there was much wind in the Rudd sail anyway. Um, uh, and Albo, in my view, is a uh, far better prime minister and a far better person than Kevin Rudd. You think he's doing well as Prime Minister, apart from appointing Rudd to oh, the position yes, of I... Ambassador? I mean, that's got to be one of his biggest mistakes so far. Well, I certainly have a, an appointment I would never have made. I would never have made. But, um, you know, that Albo's always had a soft spot for Kevin Rudd. I do not understand this, but it's a fact. And so the fact that he did it was no great surprise to me. Um, nonetheless, I, uh, I, I wish it hadn't happened. Yeah, even though everyone had denied it when the reports first started coming out prior to the election. Um, have you spoken to Anthony Albanese about your view on The Voice, by the way, and, and the concerns that you have? Uh, I have put it to him, but not for some time, actually. Um, maybe I should give him another call. All right. Graham Richardson, thank you very much for your insights. Thanks, Shari.